we've just passed checkpoint one which is just south of uh, Gerthwaite Reservoir which is around this corner and across this sort of boggy marshy field um, and uh, so far only two people have overtaken me Huzzah! <laughs> Perhaps I'm an experienced walker after all, I don't know um, Despite the fact it looks grey and overcast it's extremely mild and the forecast doesn't include rain and I'm beginning to heat up so uh, when I actually reach the reservoir I shall take off my jumper I think um, to cool down a bit the only bit of interest we've had so far apart from the fact that uh, registration opens much earlier than it claims is um, when I was walking down this little path and uh, mother sheep and all her little baby lambs seven or eight of them were illicitly leaving their field so that they could uh, cross the path and drink from the River Ned. <clears throat> Happened to walk out onto the path as I was approaching and I could see it in this mother sheep's eye. She was looking at me and deciding whether or not she could take me. Now I didn't slow down, I just kept going as if she wasn't there and I think she got the message that I was going to go straight through her if her and her little lambs didn't get out of the way. So she bleated a few orders and the lambs moved on across and down to the river itself. This is the boggy marsh which I hate. Um, and that was that. Unfortunately I wasn't able to get my camera out quick enough so never mind. On from uh, Gothwaite Reservoir which is sort of on that side, you may be able to see it just over the fence, I don't know. Um, and we reach this, this is a potholed path and this path, believe it or not, I think, um, is or was the site of a railway line. This railway line notorious because it's the oldest state-owned uh, railway line in the country. Um, and what it was uh, used for was to carry workers and carry um, big masonry slabs for the construction of the, the dams around these reservoirs, because there are several reservoirs. Ghostweight is the first one, which we've just passed. Boothweight is up ahead, just before Loft House. And Scar House is uh, another one, which is where our journey reaches its halfway point before we turn round. Beyond that, there is in fact another one. Uh, and that sort of is pretty much where the River Nid uh, begins. Um, and so obviously, because this area is full of dales and uh, quite steep-sided uh, hills, they had to have a good way of getting there. And this was it. I guess it was in better repair back then than it was now because, you know, no way in hell is this an easy uh, <laughs> way to go to work. But uh, don't forget it was a, a train, so there would have been tracks along here. Would have been a rickety little thing, no doubt, winding its way through the countryside. We're making quite good time, I think. Uh, the weather is uh, quite good. The, it's 
the overcastness is lifting. I have been overtaken by about six people now, but that was quite deliberate. I stopped uh, just around the boggy field area to take off my jumper because it was beginning to get a bit warm. Um, that's not really a uh, anything to do with the weather. It's more to do with the fact that big people, okay, fat people <laughs> like me, um, when we move around, we create a lot of energy, and most of that energy is released in the form of heat. So, if I was to walk at the same rate as, you know, somebody a lot smaller than me, even if we did the same speed uh, and the same amount of mileage, I would produce a ton more um, heat. They'd probably produce more kinetic energy, but uh, I would produce more heat. And so I see a lot of other people passing me uh, with jumpers and thick woolies on still. And no doubt around lunch they will be taking those off. But uh, right now is where I know that I needed to have a bit of a cool down. So I am now fresh as a daisy and heading along this rickety path, which was a train line. Uh, and this goes on quite a fair way, because when we reach the head of this path, we split uh, from the return journey. The return journey, as in actually going over the same ground again, starts at the end of this path. So we literally do have to walk the bit we've, the ground we've covered so far is repeated twice because we do have to cover it again on the return journey. But everything after this path, where this path splits at the end, uh, that is like a big circle. Um, or a figure of eight, in fact, if you're doing the 22 mile walk, which is what I am doing this time. I do apologise for the fact this is bumpy, but A, I've got to watch where I'm going, and B, I particularly want to drop you in one of those puddles. My conkers, which are my second pair of conkers, in fact, from uh, Cotton Traders, um, were new as of about three or four weeks ago, so I've had a chance to be able to wear them in along with my new insoles uh, from my chiropodist. Um, uh, but they haven't had enough time yet to have holes in or anything like that. So I've done the best I can with sensible walking gear and the likes. British countryside is littered with gates like that, and if it isn't gates, it's silly styes. And I have to say, my one big bone of contention with styes are the fact that they are not made for people my size. Not only are they a nightmare to cross, but uh, they're also a bit fragile. <laughs> 